Okay, uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I'm Bing Jiezhang, a postdoc in Rohu City, Jilin. And in the Center for Integrated Cellular Analysis virtual series, we highlight new papers from our center that we believe to be of interest for the broader community. And today's seminar will introduce IRISIC, a novel optics free spatial transcriptomics platform. And this innovative method addresses key questions in current techniques and offering a robust and high throughput approach without the need for specialized equipment. And notably, IRISIC is significantly more cost effective than existing commercial platform. And what's more, it also allows for simultaneous processing of multiple tissue sections across various resolutions and capture areas. And as always, there will be a time for questions at the end of the talk. Uh, you can either use the raise, uh, a raise hand feature in Zoom, and I will call on you to unmute, or you can directly type your questions into the chat, and I will read it to the speaker. Uh, so now I'm pleased to introduce our guest today, uh, Abdul Abdul. Uh, he is a graduate MD PhD student in the Tri Institutional MD PhD program at Well Cornell, uh, currently conducting graduate work in the laboratory of Dr. Junyu Cao at uh, Rockefeller University. And before beginning his medical and graduate studies, uh, Abdul completed his bachelor in neuroscience at Rutgers University. Uh, he later worked at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, uh, where he studied the Parkinson's disease using the single cell genomics. And currently, his research focuses on the development of optic-free uh, spatial transcriptomic tools to explore microenvironment and cell-cell interaction changes in aging and neurodegenerative disease. Uh, so and now, uh, Abdul, I will hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Minji. Appreciate it for this kind introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, let me uh, uh, start my presentation. Um, Do you see the, is the screen um, and my audio, everything is great? Yeah, looks good. Okay, thank you so much. Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Abdul. I'm a graduate student in the Cal Lab um, and uh, in the Tri-I Institute. Um, and uh, today I'm gonna talk to you um, about uh, a novel method that we have developed in the lab um, for optic free spatial uh, genomics uh, profiling. Um, so, uh, the talk, I will break down the talk into different uh, sections. Uh, first, I'll introduce some background about spatial transcriptomics. Um, uh, then we'll talk about our method and how we used it to gain some insight into uh, the aging mass brain. Um, so first of all, um, spatial transcriptomics uh, really uh, changed the way we study tissues back around uh, 2015 um, when, the, when uh, the, the spatial trans transcriptomics came out. Um, with the microarray based uh, tool for um, sequencing based uh, methods. Um, and then that was uh, um, that was uh, uh, brought uh, expanded by uh, 10x Visium as well. And then years later we had bead based methods as uh, the Cytseq and HDST. and then years on later we had the, uh, the polony and also we have the microfluidic space and all of these methods, uh, uh, have the uh, they try to uh, essentially generate spots uh, that are uh, at the very small spots at the cellular or the subcellular level um, to capture tissue uh, and RNA and it's uh, uh, localized uh, um, in the tissue without disturbing it. Um, and uh, all, uh, most of these methods require uh, some form of the uh, location indexing. For the microarray based, they require some uh, ma machines to print the locations and uh, for the beads or the polonies, uh, they require the uh, imaging based uh, to decipher the location of the spot. Um, and uh, for example, this is a, uh, an example of the slide seek uh, 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 in situ sequencing uh, in which you have uh, these beads that are monolayered on a on a slide, and then you use in situ uh, indexing to barcode the location of each uh, bead uh, through uh, iterative sequencing of each uh, uh, base. Um, and that uh, has been great actually in getting uh, uh, a lot of the 
the data and pushing the field further forward. Um, however, um, um, as a, uh, there's a unique limitation to generating a lot of uh, slides and also the issue with the field of view of microscopy limits the size of the tissues that uh, we can analyze. Um, and this limitation is also applied to other methods as um, uh, that are probe-based and, uh, and microscopy-based, uh, like small uh, uh, single molecule fish uh, and star map and also near fish, which use uh, uh, probes to for each RNA and then take sequential imaging. Uh, all of the essentially, um, uh, while, um, for example, the sequencing-based spatial transcriptomics method are all transcriptome. However, they still uh, depend on microscopy or other methods to uh, get the in situ location, and this limits the throughput of the of the field currently. Um, so, uh, uh, several years ago, we had uh, a new concept of to get the location of uh, of molecules and uh, the tissue or the cells uh, as a DNA microscopy. Uh, back in 2019, and uh, uh, it essentially uses uh, it concatenates uh, uh, single molecules uh, to and then sequences uh, based on the proximity, the, the location to generate uh, a map. Uh, however, uh, a limitation to this tool it's uh, it's it's a wonderful, beautiful tool, um, but uh, the limitation is still the throughput. It's a it's a super high resolution, and you really cannot do it. Uh, it's it's hard to expand it to larger uh, uh, tissues. Uh, as a, uh, uh, as a map frame, for example, due to the, uh, the super high resolution and the eventual sequencing cost that comes with it. And then um, we also have something, uh, a paper that came out, uh, it's, a, it's a theoretical framework for deciphering the location of spots as beads, uh, uh, as DNA GPS. Um, and uh, however, the, this work uh, uh, has only been theoretical and really there has been uh, no experimental uh, follow up. However, um, uh, uh, these uh, th this kind of work has really uh, put the new concept for uh, as for a DNA as a tool as an alternative to uh, opt to optics based imaging. Um, so, uh, uh, building on this, we we introduce uh, uh, IRSeq, which is uh, a tool developed with, with a wonderful collaboration by an amazing uh, research specialist that went wrong. Jiang in the lab, um, and essentially uh, with IRSeq, you generate, you have these uh, barcoded beads um, as sender bead and a receiver bead. Uh, we generate them individually and then we mix them. And then we uh, monolayer them on the array. Uh, and then uh, when we do this, uh, the, uh, it, it, we do not, uh, we, uh, we do not need uh, to get over the sequencing. We just use a, uh, uh, the receiver, the, the sender beads have a photocleavable linker uh, and, and such that they send uh, barcodes to the receiver beads and you create neighborhoods of interactions between a receiver and a sender bead. Uh, and this uh, does not require any specialized equipment. You just need a glass slide actually in the beads and you monolayer them. Uh, and then you put the tissue and then you capture the RNA as, uh, as well and you do reverse transcription and you submit it for sequencing. Um, and then uh, uh, all of this takes a few hours. Actually, it could be done in a span of a day if you start out early in the morning and finish it, uh, but it's uh, up to the user. Um, and uh, the, the, it's very easy uh, because it's, uh, it's very easy. You could do multiple tissue sections or increase the array size as well. Uh, let me, I'll just go over here over the chemistry of iris. So you have, uh, we have these uh, beads, which are the, here it's B2, but it's the sender bead and has this uh, photocleavable linker. Uh, and uh, you have, they also have a poly A, which, uh, and then you have the receiver beads, which capture both, uh, both the, uh, the, the, the sender bead barcodes and also the, um, the RNA from the tissue based on the poly T. Uh, and uh, uh, you just, the, the reverse transcription enzyme actually, uh, uh, synthesizes the the strand, so you do not need to do multiple steps as well. It's all it's a, only one um, uh, one uh, one uh, uh, reaction to capture both the RNA and the barcode. Um, and then when you do this, um, uh, the you you get after sequencing, you get two matrices. Um, 
you have a sender bead by receiver bead matrix, and you have a, a receiver bead uh, by the by by gene uh, counts matrix. Uh, we take the sender by the receiver bead matrix, and we do dimensionality reduction based on PCA and UMAP to get a map uh, that that should look like the array. For example, we use a square arrays. Uh, so we need to get a square. And then we also have a, a, a bead by gene expression uh, matrix and we do damage alter reduction and we also get clusters based on the, the, the region, for example, of the mouse brain. Uh, so we applied this to uh, uh, on a mouse uh, tissue section and uh, we've just followed the, uh, the, the sequence of the experiments I described earlier. And uh, we are able to uh, construct um, a whole map of the of the array and where we have the and uh, and here I'm here I'm laying over the 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 UMI counts and here you could see beautifully the architecture of the of the tissue where the where the tissue sits and where the RNA is very high density and it shows you that uh, the limitation of the, there's not much diffusion as well it's a very restricted uh, uh, localization and in the shape of the tissue as well um, and then we also have the gene expression clustering. And when we cluster and annotate the brain regions, we see a nice over uh, the different uh, the architecture of the mass brain tissue as well. Um, and uh, in, in our preprint, we further described the gene markers that we used to annotate these brain regions as well. Um, sorry. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, a, a, a unique aspect now you might wonder like uh, this is the right now it's uh, similar to other tools uh, uh, you might wonder what's the piece, what's the unique advantage and uh, it really it comes down to the cost uh, uh, the the it cost uh, the whole library prep costs about thirty dollars for a for a tissue section um uh, compared to other uh, the commercial based platform which can go into up to thousands of dollars for the same size. Uh, and uh, also a unique aspect is, uh, uh, and also the cost actually just mainly comes from the, uh, from the library preparation. The array, the beads, all this stuff is extremely cheap. It, it's uh, the cost of the sub dollar cost. Um, so, and uh, uh, going further, it's uh, a unique aspect of IRC because uh, is the this array size could be expanded and adjusted depending on the tissue size and the user choice actually. Um, and a unique, another unique aspect uh, is that the the resolutions could be also flexible depending on the particles that you are called that like the beads. Um, so, for example, we we did um, a, uh, uh, an expanded array size, one point five by one point five centimeters, which is a, a surface area that's uh, larger than two centimeters, and we were able to fully reconstruct the 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 array with it and also get two tissue sections uh, mapped on it as well uh, and this was really really exciting for us that we're able to do this so um, uh, the, the, so there's a hopefully in the future there's no limit to the array size and we can keep expanding it more and more depending also uh, on the sequence and cost um, and another aspect is the the resolution, uh, we can really adjust the resolution uh, by just by putting uh, different sized beads. Uh, so in here, we tried the, the, uh, about five micron beads and we were uh, able to reconstruct with a higher resolution the architecture of the tissue here. For example, you could see the neuro D6 patterns in the uh, hippocampus um, uh, area. And you could see here, it's a bit, it's more defined than the 50 micron beads and it's similar to the the 10 micron slide seek uh, method as well. Um, uh, so next we uh, next we wanted to uh, look at apply this method to infer some insight into uh, the uh, the aging mouse brain. Um, and here we used uh, um, about the four month age and the 23 month age animals, um, and we. Uh, we captured different anatomical sites of the mouse brain that range from the anterior aspect to more to the, the dorsal aspect um, uh, to capture different brain regions to assay the, the, the some uh, to assay uh, gene expression features and also cell type uh, cell type abundances in the aged mouse brain. And here, um, you we 
here, uh, this is uh, the clusterings of all the different uh, 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 animal cohorts uh, sections uh, from section three, which includes the, uh, the cortex, the hippocampus, and also the thalamus. And here uh, we re are able to reconstruct uh, beautifully, again, the, 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 this area of the mass brain and uh, uh, map different, uh, different cell types here that are associated with the ventricles, for example. And also, uh, we show that some genes are restricted as well uh, through the ventricles. Um, and also, this is uh, the, uh, the, the anatomy is also, we can reconstruct a different anatomical side as well nicely. Um, and, uh, uh, and for now, we have focused on these brain regions, and, uh, but essentially, this gives us an insight that uh, the method is very replicable and the computation also across uh, different uh, tissue sections and different anatomical sites as well. Um, so when we, uh, an, an, an insight that has been previously, uh, previously described before um, uh, uh, that we have also observed with, the, with our method is that we see a heightened uh, immune activation and interferon uh, signature in the, in the white matter um, region and these are some of the uh, here I'm showing here a, a heat map of uh, the restriction of these uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, immune activation and interferon markers restricted that, for example to the, uh, the to the white matter regions and also in other brain regions but the white matter uh, is really unique uh, and also the ventricles um, as well uh, and this has been also previously uh, inferred uh, and this gives us a more of a further confidence about the method's ability to capture biological insight from, uh, from the disease versus control samples. Um, and we, we further wanted to test, uh, look into the, these regions uh, to, under, to, to understand whether there are like specific cell types that are driving these, uh, these uh, differential expressed genes in these uh, different brain regions. Um, so, we use the 50 micron beads. Uh, so they, and these beads capture multiple cell types. Um, so we use the uh, RTCD uh, uh, to, de to deconvolute the different uh, uh, cell types. And there are different deconvolution methods, uh, but this one also, uh, this one worked uh, uh, efficiently uh, with our analysis. So uh, we used it to deconvolute um, uh, the, the cell types across the different uh, brain regions. And then we try to, after we, uh, we try to assess the, the differential abundance of these cells. Um, and uh, a unique uh, finding that I think is very exciting that we saw is that uh, uh, previously um, uh, our lab has published a, a global uh, analysis of the, of the mouse brain uh, in age versus adult. And uh, some of the unique cell types that we, that other groups have uh, also identified, and we also ident we also identified uh, uh, previously in our lab uh, are these uh, reactive oligodendrocytes and uh, uh, microglia nine, which is actually uh, the disease associated microglia. Um, uh, but when we when we uh, when we mapped the cells uh, across the different uh, spatial regions that we identified, we saw that uh, the the disease associated microglia or microglia nine is really uh, highly enriched in the white matter regions. Um, and we further go in, the, in our manuscript where we see that there is a heightened uh, colocalization of these two cells. Um, and this was a, a, a really exciting result for us because uh, uh, there has been uh, 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 several studies about the, about the white matter role in, uh, in, uh, in the reactive uh, microglia and uh, not only this finding, we also see uh, some um, some uh, 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 result where we showed that neuroprogenitor cells are, for example, all decreased in the ventricle uh, neurogenesis regions um, uh, near the near the near the ventricle walls, uh, and we also see this uh, the NPCs, which are the neuroprogenitor cells, as a decrease in this region as well. Uh, so uh, we. It's really uh, it, it's interesting that we that the method is able to validate previous finding and also help us gain further insight into uh, the the aging mouse brain and uh, and this serves as a nice uh, an analytical hopefully framework for 
uh, uh, for larger uh, spatial data sets and tissue sections as well uh, for, uh, for analysis. Um, and here I'm showing you the, the disease uh, associated microglia. This is the, uh, the white matter strips of this, uh, of this section in the adult and the aged mouse brain. And here we see that we have the, uh, the, the disease associated microglia um, uh, enriched in, in this white matter strip compared to the other regions. And also it's uh, followed by the, the, with the reactive uh, oligodendrocytes as well. So there might be some um, a possibility where you have the, uh, the you have these reactive micro, uh, oligodendrocytes emerge and then they possibly drive the emergence of these of the disease associated microglial state in the in the white matter um, in aging the mouse brain and this is further this gives us an insight about that but it does definitely needs uh, further time points and further analysis uh, to further link into um, and um, next what we did after we identified uh, these uh, microglial niches, uh, we take the beads and the white matter with the, where we see the disease associated microglia, and we run some differential uh, uh, gene expression analysis on these beads compared to the beads without them. And we see uh, uh, a lot of the marker genes that are, these beads are associated uh, with reactive astrocytes and also reactive uh, oligodendrocytes. Uh, uh, and uh, it's interesting to see that you have this uh, localizations of all these cells uh, in the in the same spot, uh, and 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 it will be further interesting actually to see the ligand receptor interactions between them, where there's a possibility that uh, them sitting together just to further drives this inflammation with aging in the uh, in the white matter. Um, so uh, with all of this. Uh, 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 um, uh, one thing before I go on to the summary, I, I just want to mention one more thing about the method is that uh, uh, in, we, we have developed an in-house making strategy for uh, barcoding the beads um, and you just need the, the primer plates uh, and a, a droplet generator to generate hydrogel beads. However, if, the, if people are not uh, interested in further bike equipment, we also have a strategy which is uh, uh, to generate, uh, to barcode commercial beads, which are a bit very abundant actually across different um, uh, companies. Uh, and we, we utilize the, uh, uh, from, uh, de from decoder seek these uh, dendromers. We cut the beads with these dendromers to enhance the efficiency. And we have tested it across different sized beads uh, uh, as well, the, the conjugation um, and it worked pretty well. So essentially the users are able to build this platform in their labs without really too complex of equipment. They just need the uh, enzymes uh, and uh, barcoded plates, and they could run large scale uh, spatial transcriptomics analysis. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think this is a unique advantage of IRSeq compared to other platforms. Um, so in summary, here we have developed a uh, trips free uh, spatial transcriptomics method. Uh, it is uh, adjustable for large or small tissue sections, and the resolution is also adjustable. Uh, it's a very low cost, and it could be equipment-free as well. And we have used it to gain an insight into the aging mouse brain and where we identified the uh, altered uh, cell abundances in the aged uh, white matter as well using this method. Um, and uh, one thing is that uh, this work is uh, on the preprint online right now and by archive. And we also have a, a, a supplementary note uh, with detailed uh, protocol. And please reach out to us if you have any questions also about the protocol. Um, and we will keep updating it also in the future to make it more clear for, for, for the wider public to use. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, similar uh, 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 to, to methods uh, with the, that uh, try to solve a problem with different uh, strategies from the uh, Macaz from the Fei Chen lab, and also from the uh, 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 from the Sanjay and the Shindurai lab. Um, and, uh, and just to keep people aware that other people are also in the, working on this in the field. Um, and, uh, and to this, uh, I would come to an end uh, uh, and uh, want to thank uh, my lab members, uh, June and Wei, and of course, a special shout out to 
uh, Wei Rong Giang, who's an amazing research specialist. Uh, uh, and uh, without uh, all the collaborative efforts, none of this work would have been available. And I also would like to thank my member, my lab members and the program as well. Uh, thank you to everyone. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, okay, uh, thank you Abdul, for sharing your exciting work with us. And uh, now we will uh, move on to our Q&A session. Uh, uh, if you would like to ask a question, uh, please raise your hand or type your questions in the chat box. Uh, yeah, uh, here's one question. Uh, like uh, regarding the mRNA capture, uh, RSEC seems to be quite similar to the SLED-seq. Uh, have you ever uh, like implemented any optimizations to increase uh, the mRNA capture efficiency? Um, so the our capture efficiency is uh, pretty. Uh, it's pretty high actually. We can get up to. Uh, thousands of UMIs per bead. Um, and, and, and we have optimized it with different strategies. Actually, we have different protocol versions uh, where we, where right now we, we, where we freeze the array and we add some uh, enzyme digestion also before the reverse transcription as well to, uh, to increase the efficiency. Um, and it's, uh, I believe uh, actually one thing, uh, uh, and I think as the slide seek is 10, mi uh, is 10 micron resolution and uh, ours is about 50 micron. Uh, and uh, it's it's very hard actually to infer uh, exactly the capture efficiency when, when you have like uh, different resolution methods. Um, uh, um, so that's one thing to mention. Uh, the efficiency for the 50 micron these I, I think it's pretty solid. It, it can go up to uh, multiple thousands of UMIs with just about uh, 40, 50 percent uh, sequencing depth. Um, and as far as the high resolution beads that we use, the efficiency is similar to SlideSeq, actually. Um, and, uh, and we are optimizing it currently as well, and we will update the protocol for, uh, 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 for, the, for, for the higher resolution in the future as well. Um, but it, it should be similar to the slide C capture efficiency. Um, yeah. yeah, okay, uh, thank you. And our uh, next question is, uh, do you have plans to adapt this optics free spatial uh, platform to profile proteins or chromatin accessibility? Um, it, yeah, I mean, right now we are focused on, the, on uh, optimizing our method for the RNA. Uh, capture and also um, uh, the, so not currently no uh, okay yeah uh, thank you and uh, also our next question is like with a uh, varied uh, resolution like by changing the uh, bit size uh, like uh, can you uh, to uh, explain more about how we can uh, study the sensor interactions with your method uh, so you mean like if we if we uh, if we have the higher resolution, how we are oh, able no. to study cell cell interaction? No, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it, it it's actually it shouldn't be that different because uh, when you have higher resolution, you have a closer the 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 deconvolution will be closer to one, so you, it's closer to the single cell level. Um, and the the uh, you you can essentially do the same analysis. However, you have the, the it's a cleaner signal with the higher resolution where you're able to infer the cell cell uh, localization um, uh, as well. Uh, now the question might be about the computational, well, it's not really, it might, you might have a, like a error from the reconstruction to get the cell cell interaction. Uh, that's definitely a cause of concern, um, but it could be um, validated by, for example, using as well the higher, the, the 50 micron beads uh, to uh, use it two different uh, chemistries or size these to validate the cell cell interact. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, thank you. So uh, yeah, thank you again for the talk. It has been very exciting and this seminar uh, has been recorded and it will be available soon on YouTube and on our website. And you can uh, follow us on Twitter or check our website for the latest announcement regarding the upcoming talks and events. And uh, with that, I would like to thank everyone for joining us and we hope to see you again uh, at our next seminar. Uh, have a wonderful day. Mm, bye. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.